Hi, for this video what I want to do is just discuss the definition of what a hypothesis test is and then go over the general steps for all hypothesis testing. So with any hypothesis test that you are going to do, there are certain steps that we follow. So this is really just an introduction. It does not go into any specific mechanics of different hypothesis tests. It just says in general what you would be doing. Okay, so the first thing is, is the definition of a hypothesis test is a process that uses sample statistics to test a claim about the value of a population parameter. Okay, you can also use hypothesis testing for non-parametric tests, but right now I don't teach those, so I am only going to focus on parametric tests. Okay, so for example, a company advertises that a new hybrid car they manufactured gets 45 miles per gallon. You might suspect this claim is not true and could use a hypothesis test using a sample of cars to see how accurate this claim is. So you might go and sample 30 cars, drive them in different conditions and see what their average miles per gallon are and compare it to the advertised claim. Okay, so with this, you will always need to have a claim that you are trying to test, and then you will set up your test in a specific way. So when you are doing a hypothesis test, your first step that you have to do is to start with checking your conditions for the test that you are planning on using. So if you're doing a test for the mean, you would have either a z-test or a t-test. If you're doing a test for a proportion, you would do a one proportion z-test. Um, if you're testing the difference between two means, then you would do a two sample z-test or a two sample t-test. So there's a lot of different tests out there. Um, the ones that I mentioned aren't the only hypothesis tests that there are. But for every single hypothesis test that you are going to do, there are conditions that allow you to use that specific test. So you always want to check your conditions and figure out what information you have and what type of test you will be using. Okay. Um, your second step is, is you're going to identify what your claim is, and then you're going to set up your null and your alternative hypotheses based on the claim. So the null hypothesis always has to contain equality. It's your starting point. And the alternative hypothesis always has to have a statement of inequality. Your claim could be about either one of these. Um, and your interpretation will depend on whether your claim is for the null or whether your claim is for the alternative hypothesis. Okay, I do have a video that shows how to set up the null in the alternative hypothesis for specific examples. Okay, it's important to determine your level of significance next. That's also known as the alpha level. Um, the alpha level is your threshold for deciding whether you're going to reject or fail to reject um, your null hypothesis. It's really important that you decide this before you start because at the end of the test you can't change your level of significance to make it fit the claim that you want it to fit. Okay, so you do have to make sure that you establish this before you start your test and not after. Okay, it's also important to identify all of your sample statistics that you need to use the test. So like if you're using a test for the mean, then you need to know your sample mean and either your sample standard deviation or your population standard deviation, depending upon the test. Um, if it's a test for proportions, you're going to need to know your p-hat. So uh, your sample statistics depends on the test that you're going to do. And like I said, I do have videos that show you specifically how to do each of the different types of tests. This is just a general overview. Your next step is to sketch a picture of the sampling distribution that you will be using. For the classes that I currently teach, that will be either the Z interval or, uh, sorry, not the Z interval, the Z, um, the normal model or the T model will be your pictures. So it would just be a bell-shaped curve. If you are doing a chi-square, then your chi-square would be a skewed right, or sorry, yeah, skewed right distribution. Um, so the sampling distribution is just what are you using? Are you using a normal model? Or are you using a T model? What are you using? Okay, your next step would be to calculate the standardized test statistic. And every single test that you run has a different formula that you would use in order to do that. You are going to place it somewhere on your sketch. And your sketch, um, there are two different ways that you could do this. You could set up your sketch where it has all the critical values shaded or you can shade based on your standardized test statistic and um, whatever your alternative hypothesis is. The alternative hypothesis determines your tail of your test, whether it's left tail, right tail, or whether you shade both of them. 
And then you're going to make your decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, there are two decision rules that can be used. It's really up to your preference. If I'm using technology, then I always use the p-value. Um, if I am using a table, then I find the rejection region by looking up my critical value. Um, and then I use my critical value to help me make my decision. So if you're using the p-value decision rule, if your p-value is less than or equal to your alpha level, so remember that level that we decided upon up in um, step three, you're going to compare your p-value, which is your probability value. It's the probability of getting your sample statistic if the mean was true. Um, so if your p-value is less than or equal to the alpha level, then you're going to reject the null hypothesis. If your p-value is greater than your alpha, then you would fail to reject. If you use the other method with the rejection region, um, you would set up your rejection region in your model based on your critical value from whichever model you are using. So if it's a T distribution, you would find your T score. Um, if it was a normal distribution, you would find your Z score. And then you would decide, is your standard to standardized test statistic in the rejection region? If it is, you reject. If it's not, you fail to reject. And then your final step is to write a statement to interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. Um, so I will do a video that does demonstrate how to write your um, decision in terms of the original claim. And lots of textbooks have different interpretations, so yours might be slightly different than the ones that I do, but I go based on the text that I'm currently teaching from. So with this, again, a hypothesis test is used to determine whether a claim is true or not. It's based on sample statistics, and then you would go through and you would find the information. All hypothesis tests generally, generally follow the same method, checking your conditions, setting up your null and your alternative, determine your level of significance, sketch a model, um, calculate your standardized test statistic, and then make your decision to either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then you always interpret your decision in the context of the original claim. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.